When you bring home an agave from a nursery, don't assume that it's not infested. The agave snout weevil has moved into Southern California. You notice I'm wearing my glasses so that I can see this dreadful pest. Yes, you can grow agaves. It's just that you need to be a whole lot more careful and you don't want to have the snout weevil infest the agaves in your garden, nor do you want to pass on infested agave. I think you're going to find this reassuring rather than scary because it tells you what you need to do and how you can prevent the collapse of a prized Volkswagen-sized agave. This is Agave Americana marginata, a century plant with variegation. It's one of the favorite foods of the agave snout weevil. Check around the center of the plant, the core of the plant, for puncture wounds because the snout weevil will pierce the heart of the plant and inject a bacteria that degrades the tissues, it's an infection, and then it will lay its eggs. Grubs go down into the heart of the plant and into the soil to pupate. They emerge as beetles and go on to infest other plants. In the meantime, the agave central core is turned to mush. It's rotten and gross and smelly and gooey. You know, there's snout weevil in my neighborhood now, a block away, and I don't think that it's going to walk all the way down here. It doesn't have wings. That means it can't fly into your garden. The only way a grub or a weevil is going to make it into your garden is to crawl in or to arrive in high style in luscious nursery soil. Wash them off. Spray the roots while you're you're looking for weevils. Now if you find a weevil, it's going to land down here in the water and not in your garden. And then as you move up the stem a bit, think like a weevil. Where would you be hiding? You'd be inside these areas, leaf axles, where the old dry leaves are attached. Remember, plant your agaves, bare root. This is what bare root looks like. In areas where snout weevil is known to be active, agaves really should be planted only in pots. Agaves in pots are more difficult for weevils to access. You can easily get rid of the soil in case they do. The snout weevil stays away from agaves with soft leaves such as agave attenuata, those with tough, hard to pierce leaves such as agave shark skin, Victoria reginae, and agaves with slender, non-juicy leaves such as agave bracteosa and agave filifera. It also infests other genera in the agaveaceae family, such as nolina, bocarnia, yucca, and furcrea. Weevil resistant varieties are under development, but it may be years before they're widely available. World renowned agave expert and hybridizer Kelly Griffin has his own opinions about how to deal with agave snout weevil. Not surprisingly, Kelly is undeterred uh, at the prospect of having snout weevil in his garden. He says that whenever something attacks an agave, he just pulls the agave out and plants an aloe instead, and vice versa. Here's more from Kelly on what to do about the dreaded agave snout weevil. The systemic uh, requires that the plant take up the, uh, the insecticide in order for it to have it in the tissues for the, uh, the insect to eat it and then consume it and die. You could look at it from a prophy prophylactic way of you know, trying to prevent the in infestation. The problem is once the snout weevil has removed the heart and you noticed it, the roots are no longer attached to the part of the plant that you want them to be. So a systemic would not likely do much in this case. And you usually notice the, the problem when the plant starts collapsing like this. And what's, what's very obvious is that it is collapsing. And oftentimes, since agaves are uh, monocarpic, they will flower and die, but if they die before flowering, then something happened to make them meet their early demise. It'd be difficult to treat something this large, but nor normally you'd, you'd use a soil drench. 
um, to try to control the grubs and see if you can keep them in. Um, there are a number of chemicals that will control grubs, but you have to be fairly aggressive, especially if you have a number of agaves, because they can spread to the other agave. The most organic thing would be is, uh, which is a lot of work regardless because of the size of these plants, would be to take the plant out and remove it. The trouble is the grubs are, are mobile, uh, the, not the grubs, but the uh, beetles, when they turn into beetles, are mobile and they s usually move along to the next, next victim. So in the process of taking it out, you invariably disturb the grubs and they go crawling into little holes and out amongst the other plants. So it's a, it's a difficult thing to control. With a case like this, we have a large mass of, of plants control of it it's very very difficult and when you have the solitary agaves which I prefer things like Elmitiana and Blue Glow you have one plant so containment becomes a much easier um, possibility but uh, it is too bad it's unfortunate but in terms of uh, long term most insects will won't run their course and devastate this whole population they'll probably affect a couple plants and I, I don't think they'll affect all of them I would probably drench it with a uh, very strong insecticide that is known to control weevils. There are soil drenches that will take care of uh, the weevil pretty well, but you have to repeat, applicate. Jeannie Netto, whose world-class succulent garden has been infested with agave snout weevil, but she still plants agave. That is in my blog post titled Agave Snout Weevil on my website, DeborahLeeBaldwin.com.